nice and secure. Okay, maybe a little too secure. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be testing another skin tint. Today's is going to be Hourglass's Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. Now this one is actually very interesting to me because I haven't actually like really gotten into Hourglass's complexion products. I take that back. Complexion based products. I've tried a lot of their powders. I obviously love their bronzer, blushes, highlights, everything is like incredible on that side of the fence. But in terms of like their concealer, their foundations, I've always been very like just like somehow just like skirted around them and never tried them and then when they came out with the skin tint I was like I must try it. I have this in the shade 9. I obviously love that it comes in a squeezy tube. Skin tints should just be in a squeezy tube. That's the correct type of packaging for it. A couple of highlights to note about the packaging. I love that it comes to like more of a square bottom if you will. This is very aligned with Hourglass's packaging, their brand, and so I really like how this all looks. So let's go ahead and give this an open. And here is the product on my glass palette here. Ooh, that is actually quite a bit thicker as well. So it's similar to like the Maybelline skin tint that we tried a couple of weeks ago, which I was very like about that one mostly just because it wasn't as long where as it claimed to be and then also like my pores were just like large and in charge underneath that skin tint. I don't know what was going on there. This texture feels very similar to that. It's not as fluid as like the Cali Ray skin tint and so I think that that is really interesting. Really quick let's talk about the description of this. So it is a lightweight skin tint that boosts moisture levels by up to 52% for a dewy glow and provides a sheer veil of coverage for comfortable all day wear. All day wear. I'm gonna be very hard on that. All day wear to me is at least like 10 hours. I want good, solid, beautiful coverage, slight coverage for 10 hours. No breakdowns. You do also get 1.2 fluid ounces for $49. So very standard hourglass pricing. If we're being honest, hourglass is not like a, it's not a cheap brand. So uh, that makes sense. Let's go ahead and get started. As per usual, I do have the Yensa Tone Up Primer Essential Glow on my face. I don't have anything else, mostly just because this is supposed to be super hydrating formula. For those of us that exist in the world as oily, oily girls, I was like, I don't really need extra moisturization on my face. So just gonna be the primer and then the skin tint. So taking it on my hand. Actually, this is a pretty good shade match. You guys know also that when it comes to skin tints, I tend to just use a brush to apply this. I very rarely pull out a beauty sponge, mostly just because this is such sheer coverage that I feel like a beauty sponge would take away coverage. And because I have a lot of redness in my skin, I do like as much coverage as I can get from a skin tint is like what I want. This is blending in really nicely though. Definitely a little bit thicker of a formula than I originally expected. It is very dewy. Okay, so between my left side and my right side, wow, my redness is like on fire today. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, so it definitely gave me just a very, very light layer of coverage. There's not a lot of like pigmentation there. Obviously the redness is poking through right here. I'm actually gonna take a little bit more of that and use the same technique that I always use and just kind of try and stipple that product in. And let's see if it'll help cover some more. Still a lot of redness peeking through, can't deny that, but I'm not angry at it. All right, let's check out the pore situation. I don't hate my pores as much today. Yeah, it actually did a nice job blurring them out for the most part. I have quite a bit of just skin texture and issues going on today. I feel like when I tried the Maybelline, there was also a lot of issues going on with my skin. So I feel like this is actually a relatively good comparison. All right, let me go ahead and put this on the other side of my face and we'll continue to see. All right, so the other side is on. Let's take a very, very deep analysis of how this looks. First, I would like to take a second to congratulate myself for getting this shade correct. So yay. I actually think this looks really nice. Here's the thing. There's not a lot of coverage here, okay? Like you can definitely see that like, it's not covering the redness. You can still see all of my freckles peeking through. All my trouble areas are still there. But my skin looks very, very like hydrated and nourished in a way. The redness really kind of 
is questionable in that front. But I was already red before. So, well, yeah. But the one thing that I want to note that I like more than I like on the Maybelline. So the Maybelline from a couple weeks ago, coverage was much better. That was definitely a product where I was like, I could build this up and cover anything that I need to. However, the pores in that situation were just like, and it bothered me throughout the day and for the entire week that I was testing it. I never thought it would be a possibility that a skin tint would make your pores look so awful. It just wasn't something that ever crossed my mind and so now I feel like that's something that like I'm very conscious of when it comes to skin tints and like any base product now because like that was just it was it was out of control and so I'm pleased to report that the hourglass looks better from a pore perspective than the Maybelline does so or did rather. So that's that's a good start. Again I really like how it looks on my face. I feel like it did smooth out quite a bit Again, just the coverage isn't there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on the rest of my face and we'll see how all of the other products applied on top. All right, everyone, and the makeup is on. So everything went on really smoothly, actually. Whether it was a liquid product, a cream product, or a powder product, everything smoothed on really nicely. What I want to point out right now is that even though I have a light layer of translucent powder on, which you guys know, this is my normal when I'm doing any kind of makeup is I'll do translucent powder than my powder complexion products so that everything blends in really nicely. Even through that, I do feel like some of that dewiness of the skin tint is coming through. It's really nice right now, but it gives me a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of concern because I just think they say all day wear. I feel very questionable about that at this point because I feel like I don't know. You guys know the drill. I am going to be bringing you guys in with me for the rest of the day. We're going to be doing check-ins. G Brown and Obi and I are headed out on a quick road trip. We'll be gone for the next couple of days. Skin tint's coming with me. We're going to put that sucker through the test. And you guys know that after all of the check-ins for today, at the end of the week, I'll come back and let you guys know my final thoughts on the Hourglass skin tint. But uh, so far, so far so good. But it's really only been like 20 minutes. So who knows if this will actually stay on all day long. We will see. First check-in of the day. So we are about four hours into it, a little bit less than four. We actually got to our destination, which is San Luis Obispo, which is super pretty. If you are in California, I highly recommend. Anyway, let's talk about the foundation. So actually, or skin tint, sorry, skin tint. So it actually looks pretty good so far. Everything looks pretty much intact, which is impressive because right here is actually where I spilled like half of my seltzer on myself when I was driving. So in spite of all of that, everything still actually seems to be doing well. And then here is the rest of my face. Forehead looks pretty good. Bronzer, blush, highlight still looks pretty good too. I actually don't feel like I put on that much blush today, so that's interesting. So yeah, in the natural light, this is really nice so far. I don't notice anything breaking down. Everything still seems to be holding up. So we'll see if this continues to stay put. I will see you guys in another four hours. I have to admit, everything still looks really good. Everything is very intact. I did actually take a little bit of a nap, so slept on this side of my face. So actually, shockingly, everything is still hanging on, which is uh, impressive. I don't feel like I've been super active today, so I really do think that the final review, like at the end of the week when I come back and I'm like, all right, I hardcore tested this through like, meetings, long days, workouts, stuff like that. I think that's gonna be extra valuable just because I do think in this first impressions today, I don't feel like I have been as active as I normally am. Like I feel like driving, spilling seltzer on you and then like napping and reading. And then I'm going out to dinner now, but still I just, I don't feel like it's been like a super intense day. So far so good, but again, my caveat with this is that I just, I haven't hardcore tested it the way that I feel like I normally do. So I'll see you guys at the end of the night. All right, friends, we are at our final check-in. This is really the only place in the hotel room that I feel like I can get pretty decent light, which is in the bathroom. So if you can hear all of the echoes, like, sorry. Okay, it's been like 12 hours at this point and I have mixed feelings about this. I wanna say that I look really, really oily. Like this is like, this is where it typically rubs off just because as I'm eating, that's really where like all of my foundation always goes away. If you look at my forehead though, you can see like my pores are coming out in full force. This is starting to look a little bit like the Maybelline skin tint, which I did not like. It's not horrible, I don't hate it. Like when I'm looking at it from like really far away, I'm like, this still looks really nice. It still looks very like dewy, very radiant. Up close is when I'm starting to get Hey, it's a little, little, it's a little concerning. I don't feel like I have really any like outstanding emotions about this one, you know what I mean? Like I'm just very like, it's fine. 
I think what's really gonna matter for this one is my check-in at the end of the week because I think I need to know more about this skin tint to really decide if I'm going to give it a recommendation or no. Like, I'm just very like, I feel very apathetic toward it. It's very weird. I, I, and I usually don't, I'm not a very apathetic person. So we'll kind of see how this goes, but I'll let you guys know at the end of the week what my final thoughts are. I'm going to bed, I'm so tired, as you can probably tell. Okay, good night. See you guys in a few days. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is now the end of the week, so let's go ahead and talk about my final thoughts on the Hourglass Skin Tint. First things first, I am coming to you after a really, really long day of meetings and just, it's very hot. This is what the skin tint looks like after literally, what time is it right now? Yeah, it's literally been like 12 hours. Side note, I did blow my nose, obviously, throughout the day. I have allergies, whatnot. So, of course, it's gone from, like, this part of my face. A couple of things to note about the skin tint. It is not an all-day wear, okay? If you are even slightly oily or anything like that, this thing is not going to be able to be, like, perfect, like, coverage for the full day, if that makes sense. However, what it will do, and this is probably my favorite thing about it, is that it doesn't wear off unless, of course, you've rubbed it off your face. It is not transfer resistant, by the way. What I do like about it is that it does wear off rather smoothly. So my issue with the Maybelline is I felt like because it was more of a full coverage like skin tint when it started to patch off it was like it was patchy. For this one I just feel like if you look at like my forehead everything still looks relatively smooth like where I have not touched my face at all. And so in that regards I'm kind of like okay I don't I don't hate it. I'm not absolutely mad at it. So in closing is this one of my favorite skin tints no, I actually feel like the Shiseido skin tint is still much more long wear than this. It gives a better finish. I like the glowish skin tint by Huda Beauty a little bit more. This is just one of those ones where I'm like, it's all right, you know? Like it ranks very, very much in the middle of all the skin tints that I have tried. I actually think I'm gonna do a summary video at some point of all of the skin tints and give you guys like my ranking from like would recommend to like would not recommend just because I think I've tried so many now that it's like, I don't know, I'm looking at my vanity and I'm just looking at all the different skin tints that I have and I'm like, it's a little outrageous. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.